It will feature a little something extra special for uh, Barbados readers. Uh, the climax of it uh, finishes right here in Barbados, um, near the Harp Gun, the old Harp Gun project. Um, that's where that's where the the, the book finishes up. Um, it's set 50 years in the future, but uh, yeah, yeah, there should be some stuff that's recognizable to people who uh, are my readers here. Uh, okay. We're doing we're doing a uh, what I wanted to call out the history because almost no one knows about it. Um, I don't run into many people outside of Barbados who've ever heard of it, other than the most dedicated. Uh, people interested in alternate space access systems, uh, because it was originally planned to, to basically shoot, you know, that those small microsatellites into orbit uh, for cheaper than a rocket could. So, uh, what's interesting to me about the project is that it is still scientifically sound. It's just that it has been, you know, discontinued. So, what I wanted to explore was uh, maybe somebody else coming in and trying to do a 2.0 version of it. Um, and that is where the novel finishes, the climax of the novel finishes, mm -hmm. where someone has actually taken it and done a HARP 2.0 project, they've, they've rebuilt it, and this is where the sort of one of the pieces of the novel ends up, you know, featuring uh, its characters fighting it out, you know? Um, so yeah, it's just a little call out to Barbados because everyone here has uh, definitely, you know, uh, uh, been extremely, they have embraced me in a way that no one else has. Um, you know, two years here at Anime Con, um, my readers have shown up um, and brought my books and let me know that they are down here reading me in a way that I didn't even realize was happening. You know, so as a writer, sometimes you're just throwing stones in the dark and you don't know if they're, you know, hitting. Um, and so when I came down to Anime Con for the first time, it was an eye-opening experience for me to realize I had th that much love um, and that much excitement out there for what I was doing. Um, and also it started to help spread the word a little bit. So uh, getting to, to, to walk around Barbados a little bit um, and, and being so warmly embraced made me excited about the fact that I, uh, Hurricane Fever could be set in Barbados uh, it, without breaking the book in any way. So when I realized I could set it in Barbados and that the Heart Gun Project fit within some of the other stuff I was doing in the book, I was just very excited to do it. The, the series of books I've done are Crystal Rain, um, Ragamuffin, Sly Mongoose, um, and I just finished doing The Apocalypse Ocean late last year and bringing it out to people. Um, we did a, a thing called a Kickstarter, which is a crowdfunding, selling it direct, basically. Um, and uh, there are some promising uh, nibbles for the fifth book in terms of uh, maybe possibly a publisher or uh, going back and doing another Kickstarter. So I'm, I'm going to do a fifth Caribbean science fiction adventure book in that series, the Xenowoth series is what I call it. Um, so I definitely want to return to the adventures of Pepper and continue working with that character. And then those five books are the five books I planned to do, so I, that finishes up. Uh, we're still at a point where I'm getting more money for other projects. And so it's something I'm doing because I believe in the project and because I wanted all five books to exist. So, you know, it's even, you know, probably if I sat down and thought about it really closely, it's probably costing me money to do another, you know, to finish up the last two books. But um, I feel really strongly about it. I'm very proud of it. I, I love the characters. I love Pepper. Um, and so what I really want to do is, is finish it up and then just see how those five books sell. There are opportunities in this day and age to do, like, novellas, digital novellas, more crowdfunding and things like that. And so there, there are plenty of places for me to continue to tell stories in that universe, but probably not as larger books in a set series. But who knows what the future holds, you know? And so, you know, right now, all, the five books will exist. It'll be a series that is complete. Uh, the Zen of Wealth will exist. And I'm, you know, I'm just very proud and, and happy of that fact and, and excited that by the fact that so many people really... That story was a sort of I just put a, a flag in the sand around the idea of Caribbean people going to outer space. I had been getting a lot of sort of hate mail in the States for my very diverse Caribbean-oriented uh, people in outer space, space adventure series. Um, and so uh, Toy Planes was sort of a, an attempt to sort of uh, scream back and say, this is why it makes sense, this is why space access is not belonging to any one nation yeah. you know it, it doesn't belong to anyone space access is something that everyone will be interested in, and that there are scientific and economic reasons that it makes sense for any nation to invest in it and try for it so uh, I wrote that story to sort of push back and say this is this is why it makes sense and this is why 
you know, right now small African nations are building rockets and India has a space program that's constantly developing and getting better. Um, it's something that, we, it's something that uh, provides and reaps benefits to the society that invests in it in terms of science, inspiring scientists, getting people to learn about the science and so forth and so on. So I, I felt that it was important to write the story for those reasons and also for Caribbean Pride, just to say, you know, uh, we're coming up there too, you know? Um, it's, not, it's not limited to any, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's indisputable that a major Western nation, you know, has a, a, a certain amount of funding that they can throw at something that's immense. And so my thinking was like, you know, we have this can-do attitude in the islands where we patch it up, you know, and make, it, make things work sometimes that, you know, people wouldn't expect us to make work, you know, you have people doing graphic design on, on, on little, in little studios and little rooms, you know, whereas, you know, elsewhere they have like whole server rooms and supercomputers, you know, and so sometimes we, we take these limited resources and we do something even bigger with it, you know, I mean, think of the steel drum is my favorite metaphor, right, you know, here we take 50 gallon oil drums and we turn it into a beautiful musical instrument, right, and so I'm like, how would a space program with that aesthetic work. Um, and so I thought, you know, well, you know, if, even if it doesn't have a lot of government direct funding, you know, maybe sponsorships uh, would help, using open source programming would help, it would be something that we would all contribute to and, and, and put our, our backs to as, as, as a group, instead of it just being a bunch of specialists over here doing it with government funding, it'd be something that we'd all have to pull together to figure out how to do, because obviously, uh, you know, a, an island is not, a, you know, a much larger nation. Yeah. We just don't have as many people, as many resources. Um, and so that story was just another, like, how would we do this as a Caribbean nation? How could we build a, a space program? And so it was like, you know, balloons float it up as high as you can get and then fire off that rocket when you get to the top to save, to save fuel and slap stickers on it to get your funding, you know. Um, call around, see if Coca-Cola and Pepsi will slap a sticker on the side and pay you some money and see what you can do.